Arena. Let's check now the starting lineups. You can see a vast difference in experience. All five starters returning from Minnesota. Eric Anderson, the only returning starter from a year ago. Nover's a redshirt freshman. Cheney and Reynolds are freshmen. Meeks played a lot last year as a six-man coming off the bench. And Joe Beam, let's look at the strategies now for this game. Well, Indiana's going to have a problem, Gary, regrouping their young forces after that tough home loss last game out. They're going to have to have a good offensive game from their leader, Eric Anderson. On the other hand, let's look at Minnesota's strategy. Well, Minnesota's got uh, a little bit of different picture here. They want to get this crowd involved early in the game. Give them something to cheer about, see if they can intimidate Indiana. Then they're going to have to handle Indiana's screens without fouling. Those uh, moving picks, as Clem Haskins calls them. All right, let's meet another member of our broadcast team. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Are along with Sam Lickwriter and Sid Rodenheffer, the officials. Hightower will put the ball up at center circle. Going up will be Nover. He will be opposed by Willie Burton. And Minnesota has the opening tap. The Golden Gophers looking for their 13th straight win at home. There is Coffey, and it goes to Kevin Lynch. The only guy that's not a senior in the starting lineup. First thing that Minnesota did, Gary, was take advantage of those big guards. They're going to post up uh, Lynch and Newberg to take advantage of the smaller Indiana guard. Eric Anderson misses, and then Calvert Cheney doesn't find the mark, but the Gophers on the move and broken up nicely by Jamal Meeks. Bob Knight in his 19th year, the all-time winning coach in Big Ten play. Three NCAA championships and last year's surprising Big Ten champions. His counterpart, Clem Haskins, in his fourth year. If he'd win today, he would move to the 500 mark here at Minnesota. He comes in, as you can see, with those records thus far, and he is the type of coach who has turned this thing around. He has righted the ship for Minnesota after winning only nine games the first year. Shikam Jansky. He's vastly improved. Four to nothing in favor of the Gophers. I'd say one thing, Clem Haskins has accomplished one of his objectives. He's got this crowd roar. Reached by Coffey, and Coffey, who's a 24-year-old U.S. Army paratrooper. Good defensive effort on his part. He, he dived after that one, didn't he? He's well, the, all man. This is a very physical, a very intimidating Minnesota team here in Williams Arena. They smothered Iowa on Thursday night. This is Jamal Meeks out of Freeport, Illinois. Eric Anderson, the Big 8, should say the Big 10 Freshman of the Year a year ago, ducks inside, and the Hoosiers are on the scoreboard. Well, big side help just didn't come over and cut off his drive. You should never let a guy drive down the lane like that. Newburn gets it off now to Woody Burton, who's been the leading scorer for the last three years for this Gopher team. And it goes to Lynch. Is that mismatch you're talking about? Lynch taken to the hole against Chris Reynolds. Got to put it on the board, Kevin. Here's Reynolds out of Peoria, Illinois, ducking inside. The true freshman misses. Shikam Jansky comes down to the rebound. Well, they swapped miss layups, so they're dead even in that category. 4-2, the Gophers of the lead. Burton trying to duck in on the baseline, and he's tied up. Ed Hightower indicates it's going to be a jump ball, and the ball will be going to Indiana on the alternating hill ball possessions. Bob Knight with some instructions now to Chris Reynolds. They have such a young ball club. They started the year with seven true freshmen, one of whom transferred, so they're playing six true freshmen and one freshman redshirt. Here's one of those freshmen out of Evansville, Illinois, Indiana, I should say, and it comes back outside to Reynolds. Reynolds is more noted for his defense. He's really an all-out hustler. He really gets out there and plays favorite thing he's got. Albert Cheney is a left-hander, one of the few to ever play for Bob Knight. 19 seconds on the shot clock. 
Anderson takes Shukamkowski inside and gets it done. Well, I tell you, he's he's putting it on the floor. He he can shoot the jumper, and it, and uh, Minnesota has to come out and cover him around that 15 foot range. Jamal Meeks has called for a foul, trying to position himself inside against Lynch. And Joe, that's what you've been talking about. They're having a tough time matching up with the guard bucks. Well, uh, they're uh, what are they? They're four or five inches shorter at the guard position, and. Uh, Minnesota is known for posting up the guard. And Meeks has picked up yet another foul as he tried to stop Melvin Newbern, and Bob Knight is up now. And uh, not really all that pleased with this particular call. Well, it was, it was a good drive right here by Newbern. He got the step on Meeks, and Meeks tried to cut him out and get that shoulder in front of him and just didn't get there in time. Willie Burton, he's a good 15 to 18-foot jump shooter. Rebound is clear by Reynolds. Chris Reynolds playing with a lot more confidence as this year wears on. You can imagine this is his freshman year. Off it comes to Meeks, has to get it back to Reynolds. And Cheney will try one. Nice looking shot. Calvert Cheney from Evansville, Indiana, Harrison High School. He got a good screen by number 24, Matt Nover, to set him up for that wide open shot. After dropping behind four to nothing, now the Hoosiers have a two point lead. Shikamjanski double team on him. The ball will go back to Minnesota. It's so hard against the Bobby Knight team to take that ball into the wing and try to run your offense because he'll get so much weak side say and all of that help coming from the weak side. It's hard to jam it in there. They really worry about those screens that they'll set on the other end of the floor as well offensively. Reach in by Jamal Milks and Lynch will come back. Jamal Meeks on the steal attempt. Newburn, tough shot. And look at Coffey chase it down. That's the kind of play you expect from him. Newburn to try again. This one will go, and there's a pushing foul inside. The basket will count. That's Shechem Jansky, guilty of pushing for Minnesota. Boy, is it getting physical inside, Gary. But what a great play by by uh, Richard Coffey out here. And we saw in a replay the other day of the game, and uh, he's noted for those dive saves and kickoffs. Well, he had 40 jumps as a paratrooper, so he's used to jumping around. Inside move, and Coffey has picked up yet another foul possible. Would, would you say he knows how to fall, Gary? <laughs> yeah, he is a man. That's the best thing that Clint Haskins would say. Excellent defensive player. They always put him against the best opponent offensively. And now Shikam Jansky will come out, and Walter Bond, number 40, checks into the game. The foul, by the way, going on Kevin Lynch instead of Coffey. Reach around by Newberg. He led the Big Ten in steals last year, and he's fouled, and they go off the end of the floor. That's what Jack Arut was talking about as Reynolds went off the end, as did Newburn. Looks like big time wrestling here in the barn, Jerry. Will they go off of the mat? Man, what a, what a nice defensive play right here by Minnesota. And a lead pass by Lynch. He gets the ball out to Newburn. And there's the foul by Reynolds, no question about that. And they slid all the way off the floor. First foul on Reynolds. Minnesota vastly improved free throw shooting team as well as shooting for the field team from a year ago when they really struggled. Newberg gets the second half of it, and Minnesota's by one, seven to six. Bob Knight will make a couple of changes at the first opportunity. Meeks, Cheney, good hustling defense by the Gophers. In it goes to Eric Anderson, and Anderson has six points. Six of Indiana's eight. Now Indiana's getting the leadership they want from Anderson. Walter Bond got down behind him, the junior from Chicago. He caught Indiana napping, and Bob Knight does not like that. Nine, eight now. The Gophers by one. Chris Reynolds, you can see, very disgusted that they didn't get back on defense. So watch Jamal Leach, number 23. They laid the basket off, and inside a pushing foul instead against Indiana. And Rob Cheney of a beautiful jumper out of the corner. So Bob Knight's team is down by one. 15-33 to go in the first half. 
today represents the 13th different starting lineup for Bob Knight, trying to find the right combination. We talked to him about that and what the problem has been. If we're going to play our best against the zone, that's a certain group of kids. If we're going to play our best against man-to-man, -man, that's another group of kids. If we're going to play our best defensive group, the best teams I've had uh, have been teams that within six kids you could play against everything. And that's one thing that we really can't do. And he has made a change now as we come back into this game. Pat Graham has checked in. Also coming in is Greg Graham. The two Grahams, true freshman, coming into the lineup now. And also in the lineup is Chris Lawson, another freshman at center. As Burton makes the move, doesn't get the roll. And here comes Greg Graham. Well, Gary, you know he's got five high school All-Americans to work with. A lot of coaches would like to have that. Steal by Kevin Lynch. He got it away from Pat Graham. Oh, man. And timeout, Indiana. Boy, he... Coach is talking to the... Coach Knight is talking to the officials right now. But I'll tell you, there might have been a little contact on that seal right there. But man, did that ignite this crowd. Minnesota with the steal, now an 11-8 lead. As you look at what has happened to Indiana this year, Joe B, they've really not had a good ratio in assists and turnovers. Well, that that is really significant of a freshman team. You like to see that uh, assist number to be about twice what the turnovers are. And there it is thus far. Bob is still working on the officials. He did the entire timeout. He felt there was contact on the steal by Kevin Lynch. And it's batted out of bounds by Canal Lewis, who's checked in. He turns up the heat defensively for this Minnesota team. He's number 15, and he's right in the face of Greg Graham. He's a stopper. He won't let his man catch the ball. Albert Cheney gets it off to Greg Graham. Off it comes to Chris Lawson. It's out of Bloomington, Indiana, and he gets his first shot to drop. It's a one-point lead for Minnesota. Lynch with four points on two of two from the field. Matt Graham picking him up. Here's Canelo. Lewis, not a good shooter, and he's mainly in there for defensive purposes. Rebound by Burton. He scored, and he's fouled. Great offensive board work by the Gophers. They'll really get inside and, and pound those four. But the main thing right here was the positioning. You can see Coffey looking for the offensive position even before the shot went up. He had his man... Lawson screened off, and that gave the uh, open door right then for Willie Burton to get in and get that offensive rebound. Eric Anderson committed the foul, his second of the game, Burton at the line. Minnesota's a team shooting 71% from the stripe, a four-point lead now. That's what they had early in the game at 4 nothing. That's what Minnesota wants is opportunities to get their press set up. Greg Graham handling. He's a fine transition player. The ball batted away by Coffey. It'll be Indiana's ball, and Coffey, he is just absolutely relentless the way he plays. That was an acrobatic move to come behind, avoid the foul, and get that ball. Matt Graham, who led the state of Indiana in scoring last year, and look at him go on the floor. They're not afraid to skin the knees, and Coffey in particular. This possession will go to Minnesota. Anderson diving for that loose ball also, but it was Graham's throwing the ball behind his man who resulted in that turnover. Bob Martin, seven foot one, a sophomore out of Happy Valley, Minnesota. Apple Valley, Minnesota checks into the game. So Chicken Jansky and Martin can really platoon that center position very effectively for Clint Haskins. Newburn kicks it out to Lewis. They need to reverse the ball a lot against this defense. That's one thing they want to do. Here's Newburn for the corner, three point attempt. And ripped out of there by Lawson. Very difficult to enter the ball and get into offense on the strong side against Indiana. You have to you have to fake your entry and take it back to the weak side. Greg Graham, good athletic move inside. He draws a foul. Bob Martin over there trying to defend on the play. Greg Graham and Pat Graham, both of whom were McDonald's All-Americans last year. College basketball excitement continuing. First live at 2 Eastern. Its regional action is Louisville. Battles Ohio State and then 4 Eastern. Two Big Ten foes. These Hoosiers of Indiana again against the fighting Illini of Illinois. 
So Graham able to convert, and it's a two-point lead now for the Gophers. 13-42 left in the first half. Newburn playing with a very sore abdomen. He had a hernia operation in August. Walter Bond driving in. Here it is to Newburn. Gets it into Coffey. Back it goes. Coffey has it stripped. And we're going to have another hell ball, the third of the game. And this one will go to Indiana. Minnesota trying to force it into the low post. And Indiana had too many defenders in there. There's no place to put the ball on the floor. Coffey will come out of the ball game, and Willie Burton returns for Clint Haskins. Two-point you know, lead for the Gophers. Coffey kicked that first one out, Gary, and he probably should have kicked the second one out. He drew a crowd and had no place to go with the ball. Graham looks to the cutting Jamal Meeks, who has checked back into the game. Boy, they're setting those screens inside and people bouncing off of each other. The cutter is Cheney. And over two big golfers, he puts the ball up and he's fouled by Walter Bond. Cheney is so smooth. He suffered an injury his senior year. He broke his foot midway through his senior year. Still averaged over 22 points at Evansville. And he has led this team in scoring in seven different occasions. And one of the first left-handers to ever play for Bobby Knight at Indiana. The other one was Lawrence Funderburg, who oh. no longer is with Indiana. I always liked those left-handers, Jerry. I had some good ones at Kentucky. This guy has a chance to be outstanding. That's the words of Bob Knight visiting with him last night. Now Lynch will come back in, and Lewis will leave. The barn on the campus of University of Minnesota. The Gophers, who have lost 15 straight to Indiana. But on the other end of 112 straight here, leading by one and now has the lead whittled to zero. It's even at 14. The uh, Indiana young players don't seem to be that bothered by the crowd noise and the pressure of this game. Newburn trying to force it inside to Bond. That was good coverage that time by Lawson coming on the backside. Now, Newburn didn't read the defense that time. He forced that pass inside. Minnesota needs to be a little more patient and work it back to that weak side for the end. Newburn kicks it out, broken up. Newburn been shut down pretty well thus far. Jamal Meeks picking up the defensive assignment. And it goes to Burton, and Burton goes up, and he's fouled by Meeks, and that will be the third on Meeks. Surprising how Indiana's staying on the boards right now, Barry. They're really in there battling for every, for every ball. Minnesota up. coming into this game, Joe, is a plus 10 in rebounding to just back up what you're saying. Well, Indiana has out-rebounded their opponents, but uh, haven't been consistent. That's a 16 foul against Indiana. The next one, they'll be shooting free throws. Chris Reynolds now has checked back in for the Hoosiers. They sign Melvin Martin is called for charging. He hooked him, looked like he hooked him with his arm as he went baseline. That's exactly what the official is indicating. Let's take a look at it right here. And Lawson catches the right elbow in his hip right then. And Martin just spins on him. There's no defense for that. That's like nailing a guy to the ground. So he comes out, Martin comes out, and Chicken Jamski replaces him. Steal attempt by Lent. Here's Graham. He's so smooth in the open court. We mentioned Reynolds is back in. Here's Cheney. He wants the ball, a three-pointer. Greg Graham tries to follow. It comes out to Kevin Lynch. Breakaway to Bond. Overthrow, but he retrieved it anyway. Rebound is cleared then by Cheney and another jump another. ball. Another jump ball. Bond was just out of step. And I thought Lynch waited a little bit too long to throw him that pass. I'm saying jump. You're yeah, kidding, I'm, jump. Hey, I'm saying the same thing, Gary. It looked like one man had the ball. Well, that's four now. We've had this one going to Minnesota. It's even at 14. Cutter inside is Newburn. Steal by Greg Grant. Broken up by Lynch, and here they go the other way. And Lynch had a tough time as Greg Grant reached in on him. Lynch is a uh, timeout Indiana before the five second count. They didn't get it in time. Ed Hightower said five seconds expired. You can see why Haskins calls Lynch his best athlete. Yes, sir. He looks very good. He has six points. And now, Glenn Haskins 
already in shirt sleeves. He's taken off the jacket. His team with a two-point lead and a foul inside as Burton will now go to the line. That is a 17 foul. He turned and faced the basket and had three men on him. He tried to force the shot, but he did draw the foul. Burton is one of these seniors that's never beaten Indiana. He talked about being on a mission. He wanted more than anything to be able to pull this one off today. The senior out of Detroit. Both of these teams can hit the three-pointer, and uh, I look for Minnesota to start looking a little more for that outside shot. Greg Graham was guilty of the last foul. You can see the intensity in Burton's face. He's their go-to guy, and this year, he was picked on the preseason All-Big Ten team, and he'd like to make it at the end of this year. He's three points short of becoming the fourth leading scorer all time here at Minnesota. 17-14 in favor of the Gophers. Cheney oh. traveled. He shuffled his feet on his fake right then before he put the dribble down. Cheney's impressive. What a physical specimen, 6'6", and you can see why Bob Knight's so excited about it. Well, he put the ball on the floor so well. He's got great quickness, a great first step, and uh, he can go get his shot. Chickam Jansky gets it off to Walter Bond, and Bond doesn't get it. Newberg has too much size, tries to follow. Chris Reynolds was on the deck. Knight thought there was a foul. It's going to be Indiana's ball anyway. He felt that Newberg had really fouled Chris Reynolds trying to get the ball. No foul, but they get the ball anyway. Bobby Knight thought the ball rolled across the top of the backboard and touched that wire, and the referee told him no. It fell off before it hit the wire. Eric Anderson gets it off now to Chris Reynolds. Reynolds just has to learn to use some of that quickness. Once he gets that under control, Bob feels he'll be a solid player. Anderson baseline, Burton blocked it and comes up with it. Excellent block by Burton. Kevin Lynch with six already, and he gets the roll, and it's a three-point shot. That's, that's two outside shots by Minnesota the last two times down. And I think that's what they've got to do to loosen up that inside defense of Indiana. Lynch with nine. Anderson baseline. He takes it to the hoop so well. And a blocking foul coming up. Let's go back to that action that ended up on the three-pointer by Lynch. Here it was by number 34, Willie Burton, getting a hand all over that ball and leading to that fast break on the block. And Lynch kissing the backboard on that three-pointer with a beautiful shot. He can hit the three-pointer. Matt Nover wants to come in, but Anderson, the man he'll replace the shooter free throw. Shikin Jansky was guilty of the foul, his second. Eric Anderson out of Chicago. Last year shot 73% from the line, 71 this year. He's with seven points thus far. Bob says if he gets that work ethic where I want it, he could be as good as he wants to be. And now they wave it off. We have a lane violation. It was Lawson in the lane. Chris Lawson broke the plane of the lane. As an end result, they wave it off. Right here in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see. There he stepped in, number 45, before the ball was released. Five-point lead now for the Gophers. Just outside, 10 minutes left of the first half. Here's Coffey back in the ball game. Coffey, the left-hander. His first two points. All of a sudden now, the Gophers getting a little operating room. Their biggest lead of the game. Matt Graham, who can shoot it very well from outside. Into Lawson. Lawson. Can't get it to go. Nover tries to follow. Burton has it stripped. And here we go. First down. Finally, Mark Robinson comes up with it. And the crowd here didn't like the way they undressed Burton on the baseline. Well, plenty of excitement right now, Gert. Is that ball rolling all over the floor and people diving for it? 22-17 in favor of the Gophers. Chicken Jansky takes it in. And a foul coming up. It's going to go on Chris Reynolds. Don't ask, I don't, know, don't, don't ask me to coach. Don't ask me to coach. So sitting here, we can rest our chin on the floor. <laughs> Chicken Jansky hits the first, 23-17. Here's a guy vastly improved, very smart player. He does everything that Clem Haskins asks of him, as Lewis now comes in, replacing Newberg. I've really been impressed with Indiana's quickness, both offensively and defensively. 
they uh, I think at that time it was Chris Reynolds came from that wing over there to stop the drive by Shisholm Jansky. And he gets the roll. It's 24-17, and Chicken Jansky will come out. Bond will come in. Four points for Chicken Jansky. The quickness of Indiana, but you sense, Joe B, that, boy, they're going to have a tough time physically staying with this team on the boards. Is they just swarm you. They smother you. Chris Reynolds gets it off to Mark Robinson, the senior. Off to Lawson. Lawson's open. Can't get it. Rebound, Coffey. Indiana really had the numbers after they broke that press, but missed the shot. Coffey and that's what, that's what Minnesota wants. You come down, you beat the press, you take a hurried shot. Lewis hits one, and Lewis has really been struggling, shooting only 29% from the field. Hey, I'll tell you, that's a plus when your defensive base hits one from the outside. 26-17. A man of gold from gold country here with the lead as Mark Robinson can't get it. And Nover over the back with a foul. If you look at the press right here, Minnesota is quick to go to the double team. They've got three men around the ball right here and four men in backcourt guarding two. That means that there's three Indiana players up court with just one man. Well, they broke it well, and Lawson broke. needs to bury this one. They've got the good shot. You've got to hit that shot, or you have to take it to the hole, one or the other. But you don't want to come down, take a hurried shot against the press. That just that just fires the defense up. Coffee. Now with three points, a 10-point lead for the Gophers. Now we talked about how important rebounds are in this game. This guy has led this team in rebounding every year and averaging over nine a game. And look at the rebounds thus far. They lead by four with 9-12 left in this first half. Biggest lead of the game, 8-11. I'll tell you a factor in uh, Indiana's rebounding. When you, when you save so much on that weak side, it's hard to get back in good blockout position. A little frenetic pace there, but Indiana survived the pressure. Cheney ducking in. Off to Eric Anderson. That's the shot they should have had earlier. Didn't get it this time as well. Pat Graham has it taken away. Lewis out to Richard Coffey. The Lynch. And Lynch in transition of bodies flying everywhere in a foul on Indiana. Great change of direction by Lynch. He was going to charge. There was no question about it. But he, he planted himself with a good jump stop and then went strong to his left to avoid that contact and draw the foul. Well, Cheney and Reynolds hit the deck. It's Cheney with the foul. All right, just by looking at that, nice pass here by Richard Coffey. And look at look at Lynch changing his position. He gathered himself. He'd make a good triple jumper, Gary. He would, and that, by the way, is Reynolds instead with the foul, and that's his third. So two of Indiana's players had three, Meeks and Reynolds. I think the thing that surprised me the most, Joe, thus far, I knew about the Coffees and the Newburns and the Burtons. I didn't know how good a player this guy is. Uh, he may be their best, Gary. I, I, I'm very impressed with him. Anyone that can shoot outside like he can, he's hitting 45% of his three-pointer. Going into this game, he was 17 of 38. And they really don't look for the three-pointer that much. What a hand he gets as he comes off the floor. Kevin Lynch, 6'6", 185-pound junior. And he grew up here in Bloomington. He has 11 points. Bloomington, Minnesota, that is. <laughs> we are Minnesota, yeah, right? right? Here is Graham baseline and the missed shot by Cheney. And Indiana's getting the shots, they're just not going. Well, there was intimidation, plenty of intimidation on that shot. Lewis hit one earlier, he comes back and hits a three-pointer, and the place goes crazy. But... The Hoosiers are in a heap of hurt right now. Inside, it goes to Cheney. This time, he doesn't get it again. Lawson tries to follow. Chris Lawson has rejected goaltending, I believe, or is it a foul? Pushing inside, it's going to be a foul on Willie Burton. Anthony Carter against Neon Deion Sanders, and then Randall Cunningham against Chris Dolman. They have a couple of slams that they attempt in the rules that they have, and it's such an interesting format. They'll have contestants from baseball, football, each contestant will have two dunks, and the best individual dunk will win that contest. Timeout here, 33-19 in favor of...
Minnesota. A lot of big name players from Minnesota. You could add Randy Brewer to that, Lou Hudson, and then what about Dave Winfield? A lot of people don't realize that Dave Winfield, the outstanding Yankee outfielder, was an outstanding basketball player here from Minnesota. Well, he sure was, and uh, played on one of those great Minnesota teams. James Brewer was a good player for Minnesota. Look at that shooting percentage. That is a problem for Indiana. Well, you can see what happens to Indiana when they allow their opponents to shoot over 50 percent, one in three. Right now, Indiana trailing 33-19, 7.48, back door to Newburgh, can't complete the play, and Lawson is playing a lot in this first half. Out of bounds play, they're looking for the lob. You see the run that Minnesota's on, 11-2. Pat Graham needs to get started, and he's fouled as he ducks inside by Walter Bond. Indiana's trying to go against that uh, weak side sag also. There were three men around the ball that time and they tried to penetrate on the drive. He was lucky to draw the foul. The foul is going to go on Lynch, by the way, as Pat Graham, six foot five freshman. We did the McDonald's All-American last year in Kansas City, and he won the three-point shooting contest. He averaged 32 points last year out of Floyd's Knob, Indiana. Well, they say that he's uh, looking too much for the drive and not pulling up, taking the jump shot. He's a good jump shooter, but uh, just like that time, he, he Always looking for the drive. Hit a big three-pointer earlier this year with about 18 seconds left in that Iowa win. He's shooting 45% from three-point range. Well, he's a good one. I don't know if I'd ever let him put it on the floor and go to the basket. I'd want him shooting that outside shot, especially to loosen up that inside defense of Minnesota. 33-21, the Gophers with the lead. Here's Lynch cutting around, getting away from Pat Graham and nailing it. Lynch showing such athleticism. He's doing it all today. He has 13. We may be missing something here, Gary. The job Richard Coffey's doing on Eric Anderson. Anderson just hasn't been a factor since after those first few minutes when he kept Indiana in the game. Well, the paratrooper has been in his face, and now timeout called by Lawson, avoiding the five-second count, and Indiana averts a turnover. 7 one to go, first half. 35-21, Minnesota. Indiana was beaten soundly Thursday. They're in danger again of getting beaten soundly, and Bob Knight's trying to change that. Well, you know what he's telling them right there in that huddle? He's telling them that this is Indiana, and they've got to get out there and show some more effort. Well, that wasn't what he had in mind, as Pat Graham lost the handle there. Bob looks to the bench for somebody that can get the job done. 35-21 in the game now is Rob Medcap, number 31. That's Coffey. Chris oh, he's playing like he's enjoying it. Well, Chris Lawson just stayed back under the basket too long. Coffey found himself wide open right there for a short jumper. Six points now for Richard Coffey. Look, Look at that effort. Oh, is that something? And now a foul on Newburn, trying to block the drive of Pat Graham. That's his first foul, but Coffey he went diving for the ball, almost took his coach Clint he, Haskins with him. He sacrificed his body. He had no, no way he could land safely and, and intercept that pass. He leaves, he leaves the ground in that passing lane and flicks it back to his man. If his teammate had been a little more alert right there, Newberg could have probably picked that pass off. I guess once a paratrooper, you're always a paratrooper. He well, goes like that. He plays like a paratrooper. Yeah, but he's, he? not, he's not even reaching for the ripcord when he goes out. <laughs> No safety valve there, right? Graham now has hit three in a row from the line. 37-22. 6.26 left in the first half. Minnesota's so impressive. We expected it at home. If they can start winning on the road, look out for this gopher team. And it comes to Bob Martin, seven foot one sophomore, broken up out of bounds off of the Hoosier. And Bob's up again. And again, every time he has to come out of that crouching position and leap up to the floor, that's going to wear you out. You can see why Clem Haskins has the stool. Bad knees or no bad knees. That'll get you quadriceps before the day's over. Newberg with a nice spin move. He has five points. They went right down the middle against that tough Indiana defense. Inside and for Graham broken up by Newburn, And here's Coffey break away to Walter Bond. He tracks it down. And finally, Newburn has it. What a save. Minnesota seemingly all over the court. Here is Bond again. Rebound cleared by Greg Graham. 
Indiana early looked like they really had their poise, but since that time, they've really been hairy. Really had a tough time gaining their composure. Cheney from outside, three-pointer. And there's Coffee again, the old man, as they call him, at 24 years of age. Five rebounds for it. Rob Metcalf, a little out of control. Anderson's got it. Metcalf didn't use good judgment on that one. He Met went against too many odds, had to put up a bad shot. Tended inside to the cutter, Cheney, and it's off of Indiana. Let's go to Jack Root. Jack? Gary, you talk about Richard Coffey's paratrooper experience, 48 successful jumps, but his 48th jump was the one that he most remembers. It seems that the man just in front of him froze as they went to the window and sat down, and Richard tripped over him. Went down end over end until the ripcord opened, and I asked him before the game, I said, did that intimidate you? He says, now nah, you know why I don't mind duking it out underneath the boards. <laughs> Jack, I would have been the guy freezing before him, I'm sure. <laughs> 39-23, five minutes left in the first half. Here is Lynch. That was a three-point attempt. Missed time jump by Indiana, but Burton is there. He got it, and he's fouled. Great hustle by Minnesota on the offensive board. Willie Burton, great position, blocked out on the offensive board. Puts it up and draws a foul. Anderson with his third, so three Hoosiers with three fouls. I'm Gary Bender along with Joe B. Hall and Jack Aroot. We're in Williams Arena, the barn on the campus of the University of Minnesota. Toughest ticket in town. It's been a sellout for days, and the Minnesota fans are not disappointed. At the 4.56 mark of the first half, the Gophers lead it now 42 to 23. And now a foul on Lewis reaching in on Jamal Meeks. He grabbed hold of him. Joe, the question that keeps coming into my mind as this game unfolds, as good as this Minnesota team is, why in the world can't they win on the road? Well, that's a tough question, Gary. I think more than anything, it is that uh, they really haven't learned to be winners. They're learning it this year, but in their past, these seniors had some tough years with freshmen and sophomores and juniors. But uh, they've got a fine ball club right here. They could beat most any club. They were 9 to 19, and then they went to. 10 and 18 before having the winning year last year. Baseline and gobbled up and being fouled is Walter Bond. And Indiana picking up a lot of fouls. They have three guys with three. They continue to have a tough time keeping Minnesota from moving inside on it. Well, they're not stopping the ball. They're letting a dribbler penetrate all the way to the basket. And that, that's where you're going to pick up your foul, foul. The defense has got to stop the dribbler, stop the penetration, running toward the corners and not let him come down that lane. But about the last three drives that Minnesota's had, they've taken the ball right to the basket. Walter Bond, who they consider as a starter, even though he's a six man, his daddy is a principal at Collins High School in Chicago. And Clem Askin says he's just the type of player you love to have on your ball club. He makes the good decisions. He's lost 20 pounds. He had a nutritionist work with him, and he quit eating all that fatty, greasy food. Yeah, but his nickname is still Sanders. 44-23, <laughs> and Minnesota with the lead. Indiana has not scored a field goal since the 10 4 mark of this half. So we're at the 4.33 mark now. Almost six minutes. Well, Indiana came back against Michigan being 20 down, but, but uh, they're not at home in this game. Crowd into this. Mark Robinson has a block by the seven foot one Martin. Lawson tries to go after it, and Minnesota seemingly getting all of the loose balls, and we have a foul now on Indiana's Greg Graham. for Richard Coffey. He pulls a Coffey move right here. He gets another loose ball while he's laying on the floor and saves it. What a play. Heads up basketball by these Minnesota Gophers. They're ready to play. John Gutekunst, who's the head football coach of Minnesota, ought to look at these guys. It's like they can play football. I think Coffey could be a good tight end, wouldn't he? They're, they're, they're athletes. There's no question about it. Burton hits the free throw. Again, Indiana really struggling. Their last field goal at the 10-04 mark. They've had only six free throws during that time. And now trail 45-23. 
A few games like this is going to give Minnesota the confidence to go on the road and play this way, Jerry. I don't know why it wouldn't. They've done it all so far. Here is Meeks with Lewis, who just is so tenacious on defense. He had a lot of comfort guarding that, that dribbler because he knew he had to help inside. Lawson fouled as he moved inside, and Bond is the guy, but looked like he had all ball on that one. Good. Indiana doing a good job moving the ball and coming off the screen, but no, he got he got him the whole length of the arm as he got the ball. He did. So it was a good call by the official. Second foul on Walter Bond as Lawson's the line. Now Lawson, in talking to Bob Knight, we didn't expect to see him play that much, and he's been in here most of the first half. He sure has. He, I guess he feels like he needs his strength inside, Gary, on the board, and he is a big, strong rebounder. My gosh, he's 6'9", about 240 pounds. He misses both free throws, tries to follow, and a foul is spotted inside on Martin. So he's effective in uh, rebounding and drawing a foul there inside. But he's not getting the ball to go. He's missed a couple of shots inside. He missed those two free throws. Here comes the old man, Coffee, and Martin will check out. So Indiana Martin. has a lot of starters on the bench right now. They could come back in here with a lot of enthusiasm. Martin had committed his third foul as he leaves, and now Lawson's missed three straight from the line. Coming into this game, he was shooting 58% from the strike. Again, a long, dry spell for Indiana. Still have not scored from the field since 10.04 of this half. 3.43 left in it. Newburn ducking inside. Nice move. Rebound, Coffee. And coming down with us, Mark Robinson. Outstanding leaper himself. Went over seven foot in the high jump when he was in high school. Meeks looking for somebody to shake loose. And there's not an awful lot of operating room offensively. Lewis just doesn't let up. Here is Mark Robinson. He was a college teammate of Dean Garrett at San Francisco City College. Dean Garrett, of course, the center on that national championship team for Bob Knight. And that's the field goal that they needed. So they went almost seven minutes without hitting from the field. And now we have a foul on Newbert elbowing in the corner. Cheney will come back in now for Indiana, and Rob Metcalf will check in for the Gophers. 2.52 left, and Minnesota, who had lost 15 straight to these Hoosiers, have started this game and have played so well in this first half, trying to break that long, long drought against Bob Knight. And Bob Knight coming off of that big loss at home against Michigan State Thursday. Finding themselves trailing likewise here today. Well, this is a tough place to regroup this young team here at Minnesota. Gary, it's not the best of situations. But uh, you, you kind of sense a little stalemate right here that uh, Indiana is playing them even here for the last four or five minutes. And now they're coming in with uh, Cheney back into the game after a good rest. So Meeks gets both free throws, 46-28. Lewis playing a lot in this first half. Here's Metcalf, a transfer to the University of Virginia, played for Terry Hall, and there he threw it away. Mark Robinson's got it. Lewis is back. Tough shot. Good defense by Lewis that time. Made it a tough shot, but Meeks with the shot inside. Good hustle by Meeks. And tied out by Clint Haskins. He senses a little bit of what you were talking about, the stalemate. And now calls timeout. A 16-point lead now for the Gophers. The turnovers, let's catch up. Statistically, Indiana's committed 10. Well, that's a significant factor right here, and that points out that uh, Indiana's youthful team makes those kind of turnovers. And also 12 points coming off the turnovers. Minnesota last scored at the 456 mark, and now 210 left in this first half, and there's another holding foul on Robinson. Indiana getting a lot of those grabbing holding fouls inside. Well, they, they're using their hands a lot, and you have to be physical to get through those screens. They're uh, they're not as strong as Minnesota. 
And the referee's telling said, uh, yeah, he, he might have pushed you off, but you had a hold of his fans. Duke over Georgia Tech. And Bob is complaining. He feels that that again was one of those fouls that should not have been called as Bond. It's the first to two. Bob Knight against Indiana through the years has been so effective. He's 27 and 8, I should say, against Minnesota. 12 and 6 here in Williams. And the only Big Ten team to defeat the Gophers here last year. You notice that Minnesota came out of that timeout by Clem Haskins, set up their offense, and started running their patterns again. They've gotten a little out of control. Also in the game now is Nate Tubbs, number four. He's a true freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Also gone to a 2-3 zone right here. Greg Graham ducking inside. Lawson gets it back to him. Graham to try one from outside. It's a three-pointer. Good offense against the zone. They got the ball in the hands of their shooter. Picked up a three. 48-33. A minute and a half left now in the first half. Walter Bond. That's a two-pointer. 17-point lead now for the Gophers. Minnesota earlier this year just undressed Illinois. They beat them 91-74. In that game, Clem Haskins said, if we play like this, we can win the Big Ten title. And they're kind of duplicating that here. Indiana looking for the wing shot again. Chaney with that quickness of his. Oh, I'd love to watch him play. Boy, he can put it on the floor with the best of them. 50-34, cuts it to 15. You see Meeks yelling some instructions to his teammates. They're trying to get back into this one. 40 seconds left in the half. I tell you, you talk about freshmen in the Big Ten. Well, you, you've got to mention Shaney right there with any of them. He has really shown something here today. Cubs and Meeks pushing each other inside. 21 seconds on the shot clock, 25 on the game clock. Bond using a pick by Shikandansky, and running through the pick was Indiana, and they pick up the foul. Mark Robinson tried to fight his way through, and he's called for the foul. Mark Robinson, uh, senior in there, giving him a little experience. He's been here before, and he's been on the winning end, Jerry. That, you know, they, I don't care how far Indiana gets down, they think they can win here at Minnesota. And Minnesota, on the other hand, has lost so many times to Indiana, they know that they can lose to them. And that's, that's what Clem's team has to develop, is that confidence in winning. I thought that timeout by Clem a while ago was a really a very timely one and seemingly settled his team down again as now Pat Graham comes in and Robinson will lead the ball game. Well, you like to see your team when it gets another team down by 20 in the first half to have that killer instinct to where they're, they're instinctively staying solid. But, but his team got a little rattled there and got a little out of control and that timeout settled them down. Walter Bond has contributed nine points to the cause. 51-35. At halftime, a feature on Missouri. That slam dunk contest going to be fun to watch. Back, Minnesota back in the man-to-man. -man. They didn't like those two baskets Indiana got against their zone with yeah. five points and two trips down. You see the time left in the first half. Into Lawson. Pat Graham. And Graham doesn't get it. And they're not going to get another shot underway in time. First half for Minnesota. And this sellout crowd is looking. We'll return with more of ABC's College Basketball after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Social distancing helps you avoid contact with those who may be infected with the virus. What can you do? Steer clear of crowds of 10 or more people. Keep a distance of six feet between you and others in public spaces. And if possible, work from home. Wash your hands, avoid big groups, stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Go to car into the paint shot. Good, and a foul here, pass ahead, Freeman! Oh! Wide open three, left side, ball time! Gay Coucher! Do you know what the U of M does for you? 
From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities, discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. But I've learned a lot about wood floors. Tonight we got batting cage challenge. <laughs> As you can see, the Monopoly board is set up with a lot of hotels. I'm gonna make the pancakes. Grace is gonna make the, the eggs. You two are going to love the cupcakes. He's gonna check on the homeschool crew and make sure everything's going okay here. Stay strong, parents. We're gonna get this done. All we can control is right now and trying to maximize our days the best we can. I'm just so grateful for family friends, for loved ones, and the Big Ten. Be a coach. Be a teammate. Be a friend. Be a teacher. Be a family. We are a team. We are a team. We are a family. We got this. We got this. We can do this. We can do this. Well, we'll see here that Minnesota's strategy was to involve the crowd, and they definitely did that, Jake. Pointing the fouling and uh, getting through those screens, and they have no one in serious foul trouble going into the second half, so they get two yeses, two pluses. Indiana, on the other hand, they were concerned about regrouping their forces, that freshman group losing at home and then going to a tough place to play on the road, and I think they've really got them playing, no question about it. But on the other hand, Anderson just hasn't hasn't carried the load for them. He had those early points. He had six of the first eight, then had only one after that. Here's Pat Graham, who starts the second half for Indiana, missing. Watson had it for a moment, and we're going to have a foul called on Coffey, who ran over Chris Reynolds. Let's check now further statistically in this first half. Well, the field goal percentage, no question, is a big factor. Indiana, 38%, Minnesota, 53 The free throw is fairly even. 78% 90, but uh, 14 by Indiana, 18 by Minnesota. Three-point plays, one for four, two for five. Not as significant. Rebounding even. I think the turnovers is probably significant in that uh, Indiana's had 10, Minnesota six. It's Chris Reynolds driving in on Lynch, and uh, Ed Hightower says, Lynch, you come into the foul. So all of a sudden, Minnesota picks up two fouls in a hurry, and that is Lynch's third. Martin has three for Minnesota. Anderson and Meeks have three each for Indiana. Well, that's a factor on Meeks. There were two, I mean, uh, Anderson, two things stopped him in the first half. One of them was the three fouls. The other was Richard Coffin. And he stopped a lot of guys. Reynolds tries to get it into Anderson. Anderson retrieved it somehow, stripped. Here comes Kevin Lynch. Got 13 points in that first half, leading all scores. Burton trying to duck in, and they're going to have a blocking foul on Cheney. Well, what team more defensively down here by Minnesota? Coffey was really putting the pressure on Anderson. He was concerned about protecting the ball from him, and Lynch came in and stole it. Cheney committing his first foul. Now, this shows you where they're taking the shots in this first half. Indiana in the paint, 6 for 17. Minnesota, 9 for 15 in the paint. The basket will count, and the foul against Indiana, blocking foul on Chris Reynolds. His third as Newburn picking up the basket. Well, here's the penetration right here. And it just like at the other end, he got the step offensively, and that's a no-no. All you could do was lean on him, and that brought the foul on. And Newburn completes the three-point play. The biggest lead of the game was 23 in the first half by Minnesota. Now they've jumped it up to 20. And they're almost losing the ball is Chris Reynolds. Off it comes to Graham. They need his outside shooting in the second half. Cheney, nice spin move inside. 55-37. Burton from outside. Three-pointer. Uh, NBA three-pointer. Well back to that three-point line. That is what Haskins said, Joe. He can shoot it, and that's where his future will be in the NBA is from 15 to 18 feet out. People don't realize what range he has. Here's Lawson trying to horse it up, and he is fouled. Well, Lawson is in there for rebounding. 
He's a good big wide body. He's strong inside. He had five rebounds in the first half. And getting those offensive rebounds, putting them back, draws the foul. It hasn't been pretty for Lawson, but the energy certainly has been there. As you mentioned, the five rebounds. He also had five points. Well, he shot six free throws in the first half, hitting three of them. Been to the line uh, more than anyone else. Uh, tied Bond and Burton for going to the line six times. He gets a roll there. We mentioned Rob Metcalf transferring from Virginia. Look at that, an overtime winning. And LSU trailing at home against UNLV, who's playing without Stacey Ogman. He's right, he's, out. He's one sitting out uh, under an NCAA sanction. 58-39. And it comes now to Burton. Burton hits the deck and a foul on Lawson. Burton, a good job of taking that baseline. He's really quick inside, can go for either hand. Look at him hold that target up, take the pass. Now watch his spin move on Lawson. Lawson got him with the knee. Burton will inbounds. Burton. Had a hairline fracture of two small bones in his ankle earlier this year. And there's the three-pointer by Burton. And he got a lot of contact on the wrist as he released that shot. 61-39 for the Gophers. Reynolds, who did not score in the first half. Gary Burton really impresses me with his versatility. He's showing you everything that he can do. There's an air ball by Anderson, who's trying to force it. And we have another hell ball. And this one will go to Minnesota. And the crowd, of course, will be on Eric Anderson's case. Eric, by the way, came in here with a strep throat situation, was not feeling real well. Watch Burton on this shot. Defense is right there in his face. And look at the contact after the shot. Could hardly get his follow through. But he stayed with it over the defense extension right then and, and stuck that three-pointer. Beautiful now play. today, Joe, he has reached the mark of being the fourth all-time leading scorer of Minnesota. Jansky, the big guy, puts it in. Shikinjansky can shoot it from 15 and on in. Six points for Shikinjansky. Graham tries to take it in. No foul in the basket. Shikinjansky hoping to get the charge. Here's Newburn on the move. The men of gold here in Gopher Country have done it well. They've been impressive. Melvin Newburn on the move. Look at shot. The senior from Toledo, Ohio, has 10. Minnesota's really come out with a lot of confidence in this second half. And in this first three minutes, they have really extended their lead and done a good job. They've, they've got to watch and not let up now, Gary. A team that gets ahead like this and gets on the roll, and uh, if they let down just a little bit, this Indiana team could fight back. Cheney with Ben Burton answers at the other end. Took advantage of the defensive overplay. And Willie Burton showing what else he can do on that beautiful backdoor play. What did you call him, the horse? The horse, the thoroughbred. He's on a roll. Anderson won his patented moves. A basket will count, and he's fouled. Chickam Jansky guilty of the foul. That's what Eric Anderson does so well, is take the ball to the hole. He goes in there with authority. Well, you know, he shoots the jumper so well that he draws the defense out on him, and he puts it on the floor and blows by. Well, there's what we talked about. Burton moving to number four. Some pretty fast company. Michael Thompson, Randy Brewer, Kevin McHale, what careers they've had in the NBA. And, of course, Tom Davis now having Burton surpass him. All-time scoring here at Minnesota. Anderson makes the three-point play. Eric Anderson was leading the Big Ten in scoring coming into this game in league games over 21 points a game. Here is Lynch. He's been quiet for a while. Look at this! Fouled to get the ball. Hey, Richard Coffee, the paratrooper, all the way from the Raptors. Hey, Gary. Hey, he was just waiting for that miss. He was dreaming about this opportunity. Watch him come down the middle. There he is, perfect position, no block out. Here he is, slipping past everybody, right down the middle for the stuff. And that was something special. Hey, he's. He may not be a pure shooter, but he, he can get those hustle baskets. Todd Leary has checked in. That's Leary number 30, and there's Lynch. That's how he started the game. Bobby Knight.
Knights not considering the timeout. And Graham doesn't get it. And this crowd is loving it. It's been a long time since they defeated Indiana. Lynch doesn't get the three-pointer. Coffee and Lawson's over the back. What position Coffee's getting on that offensive board? He really thinks rebound. Really true rebounders think that position. It's not all jumping. They're Lynch on their feet down. at the barn, and they love it. Minnesota making a strong statement here today. Well, they have their biggest lead of the game now, 25 points. Newbern trying to add to that. Lawson with the rebound. Again, the big body. He's worked hard for Indiana. On the move and losing the ball from behind is Todd Leary. Leary, by the way, is from Indianapolis High School, Lawrence North. He's a good friend of Eric Montrose, the big seven-foot center that everyone covets including Mr. Robert Montgomery Mike. 71-46, and a foul is going to go on Lynch, and that will be his fourth. That's his fourth foul. Well, Bob, it's a humbling game, isn't it? Have you ever well, been in that posture before, Joe? Well, there's, there's, yes, I have, but there's nothing like uh, what happens to freshmen when they become upperclassmen, Jerry. 71-46. <laughs> Here's Cheney, who's played very well in this game, and he nails it. That is a two-pointer. 71-48, 12 points for Cheney. That player's going to make Hoosier fans happy for a long time. Copy gets into Shikamjanski and blocked by Anderson. Cheney's got it. Todd Leary's a good outside shooter. Six-foot-two guard. Gets it in, and nice move that time by Greg Graham. Verticality applying there, evidently. And this Indiana team thus far has had no quit in them. Down by 25, now whittling it down at 71-50. Chickam Jansky, and he's fouled. And the foul will go on Anderson, and that will be his fourth. Anderson with four. Lynch had picked up four earlier. Now, here you go. There's a verticality he was talking well, about. These, these are points of emphasis, not rule changes, but the verticality, the intentional foul rule, which is different. Post play, the uh, here's the verticality right here. Player takes his position. The uh, leaper jumps into him. But uh, that was a good no call by the official. It was very incidental contact. Seven points now for Shikam Jansky. He's three of three from the line. Back to 23. 14 39. As Minnesota came out of the second half, very impressive first four minutes. They're trying to finish it off now. Cheney, this will be a three pointer, and he nails this one. After hitting from two point range, he got the tray that time. Indiana, a nice variety in their offense now. They're penetrating. And then they're looking for the outside shot by Chase. As hard as these two teams are oh, playing, you got think away with a wall closer right score-wise than it is right now. Is that ball batted away? It'll be Indiana's. You know, it is. It's amazing. It's a 20-point game. But, Joe, the way they're playing and going after each other, you wouldn't think we had that big a deficit. Well, that's a credit to Indiana. They, they are giving the effort. Even though they're 20 down right now, they're giving a great effort. Cheney now with 15 points of the game. Back door intended for Graham, and they throw it away. Graham was open. Anderson just missed him with the pass. Bob on the near side saying, that's all right. He liked the idea. It just didn't quite work. Inside, 14 minutes to go. This is a tough five-game stretch for this Minnesota team. They got to go on the road twice, come back with some tough games, including Big Ten leading Purdue. Chuck and Jansky and Lawson is fouling. When he caught the ball, he had three players around him right then. He had Lawson and Anderson and uh, Graham all dropped back into Garden. Now Lynch is down on the bench with four fouls. Anderson is playing with his four fouls. I guess at this time, Bob figures that uh, they can't afford to uh, have him on the bench, try to stay close, and hope he doesn't foul out. Well, if he'd have had him to put back in there right before the half when Minnesota went into that lull, uh, I think it would have really been an important time, but he had three fouls on him. He couldn't come with it. Shegum Jansky now five of five from the strike. 
So Anderson playing with four. A great concern to Bob Knight. 75-53, the Gophers. Minnesota coming in here 13 and four. Ranked 21st in the country. Indiana was ranked 12. Anderson has it broken up and Coffey guilty of the foul and he says, yep, you're right, you got it, ref. <laughs> he plays no, with such you. a positive note. Well, he? when you're 22 ahead, you can be generous <laughs> with your <laughs> Yes. I guarantee you if that had been the turning point of the game, he wouldn't have been so happy. On Coffey now. That is his third foul. The one and one, 17 foul. Boy, he looks like a paratrooper, doesn't he? I thought he looked a little more like a Marine, Gary. <laughs> I tell you what, he could be in the same foxhole with me if I yes, was in sir. trouble. Yes, sir. Anderson with both of them. And it's back to a 20-point game. Todd Leary trying to make Newburn work hard. And uh, going to be a pushing foul on Todd Leary. Larry trying to apply some pressure, trying to make something happen here. 20 down with 13 and a half minutes to go. And uh, he's doing just what he should be doing. He's out there getting aggressive. Well, Clem Haskins feels today could be the beginning of a challenge for the Big Ten crown. After today, they play at Michigan, at Illinois, then come home for games against Purdue and Michigan. They'll find out in a hurry where they stand. I'm going to predict, Gary, that they're going to come off of this game and uh, win a big game on the road. Did not happen last year. They just struggled all year long on the road. Won one Big Ten game on the road. Lost only one at home. And Newber now with 11 points. They sure don't want to let up in this ball game. Indiana can come back on you in a hurry. 77-55, 13-25 left in this game. You know, Indiana's got to get control of their defense. Cut down on the opportunities for easy baskets by Minnesota. And they just keep pounding it away. Mixing their offense up inside and outside. Here was a good defensive steal. That's Greg Graham with the steal and takes it to the hole. Greg Graham. They did it with their defense. That's what they're going to have to do is pick up that defense. And Larry is showing the kind of aggressiveness that they've got to have. Newbert takes him inside, though, this time. And we have a foul. And it's going to be a charging foul on Newbert. Uh, Clem Askins wants to get his team under control. Uh, Newburton, he commits the foul, and that's his third. So Minnesota getting into some foul difficulty already. The other guard, Lynch, is on the bench with four, and Newburn now with three. Uh, Clem's going to sit Newburn down with the game film and show him that there were three men in his way between him and the basket. And Newburn still trying to drive. Well, you'd listen to Clint Haskins. What a player he was. He was outstanding, playing so well in the NBA as well as at Western Kentucky. Well, and you had his uh, younger brother, or older brother. Which was it a play? I had his younger brother, Marion Haskins, one of the finest young men I ever coached. They're, the Haskins family is just a fine family, and Clem is a perfect example. 77-58 in favor of the Gophers. Walter Bond has played a strong game coming off the bench, adds two more. Walter Bond, you can see why they consider him a starter. He has 12 points. Well, he was open over there in the corner, and uh, there wasn't anyone at all guarding him. He just took it in a little closer and got the jumper. And now Newburn picked up his fourth, and Haskins now has both of his starting guards with four fouls as Bob Martin will come back in for the Gophers. Now, this, is, this is a case where I'd get one of those guards out, Gary. I'd have one of the starters in the game all the time. If uh, one fouled out, then I could come back with the other one. He's talking to Lewis right now. It looks like he's coming. And Newburn is going out. Bob Martin, who just checked in, he's playing with three himself as Lewis will check in. So Newburn and Lynch now at the 12-24 mark of the second half will sit down with four fouls each. 79-58 the count as Leary's at the line. Rebound cleared by Shikamjowski. Leary played on a state championship team last year at Lawrence North in Indianapolis. Here's Burton in good pressure defensively by Pat Graham. Bond, nice head fake. Good play by Bond. Good fake by Bond. 
You can see that Indiana's getting a little over anxious defensively as they're trying to apply that pressure, and Bond lifted him with a good faith. Bond with 14. He's averaging a little over 12 a game, and here comes Burton. Boy, Burton's got outstanding agility. And he can take it inside and shoot it outside a, as a well. A good decision right then. He was dribbling in a lot of traffic, and he just pulled it off the side and slowed it down. Lewis to Shikham Jansky, and it's going to be a foul on Lawson. Lawson reaching in, and that's his fourth. Indiana is not maintaining good position defensively right now. They're, they're giving the effort, but they're getting caught out of position defensively. That results in the foul. You know, Bob Knight's team last year won the Big Ten. People forget, though, they lost four of their first seven, then it went 24-3 and three the rest of the way. But this team, as young as they are, that might be awfully hard to expect them to rally like they did a year ago. Well, Bob talked earlier about uh, not having the complete unit that he needs, that he's missing just a couple of spots. And I'm sure he's thinking of people like Montrose and Bailey to fill in those spots. Timeout, and Minnesota is making a long day for the general. Let's go back to you. Jack, I hope that's not a season ticket you're holding there. It's just a one-time appearance here at Williams Arena. You're going to miss a lot of the action. Was, was he hanging by his feet up there? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. 83, 58 as we come back. Minnesota with the lead, 11-21 left. Graham looking for some help. Gets it to Larry. And Minnesota still playing a tough D. Cheney rejected by Bob Martin. Now Lewis off to Shikham Jansky. When you get your big man to shoot like that, that's a plus. And he feels very comfortable on that baseline. That's his favorite shot, about a 15-footer on the baseline. I always like to see some of that backboard when I shot, but he, he prefers that shot. I tell you, he can run the floor, can't he? Shikham Jansky really got down there in a hurry. He has 14 points. Here's Lawson wheeling through, and a blocking foul on Bob Martin. Slim Haskins was telling us that Chickam Jansky ran a 5.09 mile. Now, I don't know about you. I'm a jogger, and I know a little bit about the mile. That's pretty fast. That's uh, very good for a non-track man. He really is. And Chickam Jansky at 6'9", he must have those long strides as he goes around. Well, you, you know he can stay in pain if he runs that, that fast for a mile. There's the guy we're talking about. By the way, you notice his hair a little bit longer in the back. Yeah. He has a deal with Clem Haskins. If he plays well, he gets to add an inch of hair each week to that hair, too. All right. <laughs> Maybe that's what they should have done with uh, Shinsis down in Florida, made that kind of an agreement with him. You got to make some kind of concession with those situations. 85 60 in favor of Minnesota. Bond has played a strong game now, playing outside with both of the guards, the starting guards on the bench with four fouls. Here's Burton, tough shot, Lawson's there, and Lawson doing that blue-collar work for this Indiana team. Eight rebounds. And Graham taking it in. Got intimidated in there, and Martin brings it down. He had to move his, move his shot. The defense was there, and he had to move it, and that caused him to miss the shot. Ten minutes to go in this game. And there's going to be a pushing foul, and to go on Calvert Cheney. And that will be his second. Ten foes square up. Bob Knight in Indiana taking on the fighting Illini of Illinois. As Illinois poised to make their move now in this Big Ten chase. Willie Burton makes it 87-60, and that's the biggest lead of the game. Twice they've led by 25, and now by 27. Eric Anderson. Rebound cleared effectively by Burton. Shikham Jansky showing his ability to run the floor again. Was out for the outlet pass. Bond holds up. Burton to Lewis, who's hit a couple, and he hits another. His shot is on. foul at the other end the crowd really reacting to how well this Minnesota team is playing as Cheney then coming at the other end able to go up in the air and now at the line 
And committing the foul was Martin, and he's fouled out of the game. That's his fifth. I saw Cheney at a high school game, or not Cheney, I saw uh, Cornell Lewis at the high school game last night with, with uh, Clem Haskins, and he was telling me that Lewis, all he needed was to prove his offense a little bit to get more playing time, and those three three-pointers have done that. One of the change subjects for a moment, go from basketball to golf. Last night, a big announcement between the USGA and Karsten Solheim. And uh, they had an out-of-court settlement between the two. We'll develop that story more. And, of course, all golfers very much uh, involved in that as on the circuit as well as uh, just the hackers every weekend. And we'll develop that story that came out very late last night. Here is Shekinjemski. Boy, he's playing well, isn't he? He is playing a strong all-around game. He has 16 points. 12 of them this half. You know, Minnesota is still keeping up that good defensive pressure. They would think they'd have a chance to let down, but uh, they're, they're playing the tough defense. Well, they're playing the tough defense, but they've given up 92 points. That shows you how effective Minnesota's been. Here's Burton for three. Austin pushed off on that one. I was bragging on Minnesota. <laughs> There's, even though they've got 92 points, they're still playing the tough. Yeah, that's defense. right. That's so Lawson is fouled out after Martin fouled out. By the way, let's go further on this uh, story in golf. Karsten Manufacturing Corporation will receive a five million dollar out of court settlement in its suit against the United States Golf Association. The suit was filed last year after the USGA ruled that U-shaped or square groove clubs do not conform to the rules of golf and would become illegal for USGA competition. We should indicate, however, other legal action by Karsten Manufacturing against the PGA Tour, and that's a waiting appeal. So I don't know what that means for a left-handed duffer like me. I well, use those square grooves. It hasn't helped my game that much. I, I wonder if some of those duffers can uh, recoup some of their losses to guys that have been using them. <laughs> 92, 66 the score, 835 left. Graham to Cheney. Mark Robinson is checked back into the ball game. Look when Indiana starts to drive that lane. There will be five people, five golfers in that lane when someone starts to drive. Really good team defense by Minnesota. Like a wall of gold, isn't it? The men of gold, the country of gold. And the Gophers have had some golden moments here today. They lead at 92-66, 8-20 left. Indiana drives somehow to get this game closer as Robinson able to hit. A little bouncing that time between Pat Graham and Walter Bond. Eight minutes left in the game. Shikamjanski touch pass inside, missed by Coffey. Nice spot by Shikamjanski. A touch pass showing you again his all-around ability for Minnesota. Graham tries to force it in, and Bond's got it. for three and Anderson with the rebound off to Leary nice play pass to Graham overshoots it followed by Cheney Cheney has been by far the most impressive of the Hoosiers today he's had an outstanding game under very difficult circumstances you got to give him a lot of credit 20 points for Calvert Cheney timeout is called by Minnesota 721 left the Gophers in command. Scott May, now a local businessman in Bloomington and the outstanding player for Bob Knight. It's 92-70 here. Well, coaches are superstitious, I understand. And with that story, here's Jack Aroot. Well, I know one coach is superstitious, and that's Clem Haskins. He's going, as you said, for his record-breaking 13th straight home victory. Every time that Ross Eukelberg has sung the national anthem here, they have been victorious. He didn't sing one year ago when Indiana played. Clem made sure he sang the national anthem today. And I might indicate did a good job as Coffey is fouled before the shot. A good pass by his teammate, Willie Burton. If uh, this game does go on the W side for Minnesota, it would be a record for this year under Clint Haskins of 13 straight. Earlier years, they've won more than 13 in a row. And this record 
course uh, extending back to last year because they're 10 and 0 coming into this season. So it's a record for Clem Haskins and you get the feeling they may get the record before this year is over. I, I don't know who's going to beat them here. They're mighty tough here at home. You know that Bobby Knight wants to see his team make a little run right here at the end to give them a little confidence. And then Clem Haskins on the other hand he wants his team to feel finished strong so that they develop that killer instinct. And uh, we're going to see how this game possess right here with that man. Indiana will get to return home. They play next against Wisconsin on Thursday night. Pass intended for Cheney. Nice look that time by Graham. But again, Minnesota good helping defense inside. A good weak side screen then by Anderson. That free Cheney up. A lot of things this Minnesota team does well. They shoot well. They, uh, they hit the boards well. And I think another thing that may go overlooked is how hard they play defense. They, you knew Indiana would play tough man to man, but this team has really shown how tough they can be in your face. Larry experiencing some of that gets it out to Anderson, who's still playing with four fouls. 6.49 left in Eric Anderson and rejected by Burton. And now the ball out of bounds. Uh, no foul here as Bond goes over the back of Mark Robinson. Mark and Robinson. He's going to be Indiana's ball. Mark Robinson catches uh, Bond from going off the floor right there. Good block here by Willie Burton. Another aspect of his game. And here, right here, Robinson helps Bond, keeps him from sliding off the floor. And uh, Bond reaching around that time, batting the ball out of bounds. And from the person of Robinson. 642 to go in the barn Williams Arena University of Minnesota the Golden Gophers leading 94 70 I'm Gary Bender along with Joby Hall and Jack Arudas Calvert Cheney with 22 points he's been the strong player a bright spot for Indiana in what has been a long afternoon this has, been a back hard, this has been a hard played game but I, I, I don't know when I've seen a game with so many outstanding plays and it comes to Bond, and Bond has a rejected by Anderson. Both Minnesota starting guards are back in, Lynch and Newbert, both of whom are playing with four fouls. Here's Anderson again, had to change his shot because Coffee is in his face, but Cheney follows. Cheney with 18 of his 24 in the second half. He certainly hasn't quit. Inside six minutes to go. Well, he's had a highlight film type game here for a freshman. Beautiful key from Coffee to Burton. Well, the defense got out of position going for the pass and just left it wide open for Burton. He's going to take advantage of every defensive mistake that's made. Burton with 21 points. Here's Anderson wide open. And Eric drills it. Well, you know, you got to be concerned if you're Bob Knight, Joe. You get beat solidly at home. Then you come on the road, likewise, getting your head handed to you. A young team, confidence-wise, where do you start to regroup? Well, that's that's something that's awful hard to develop with as young a team as Bobby Knight has, with as many freshmen as he's got to, uh, to get that confidence level up. Uh, there's just nothing like experience, that maturity and strength that your upperclassmen have. Larry committing the foul. Let's go back to that last slam. Well, Bobby Knight looked relaxed right there, but look at the pass, set it up right here, and then the, hey, what a view of that duck. Yep. The slam cam showing that as Burton able to get his 21st point of the game as Newbern now goes to the line. Well, Clem Haskins has got to be excited about his team responding to this game today. It's been a real weight off their shoulders to finally end 15 straight losses and of course Clem himself 0-6 against Indiana coming in here. None of these seniors had ever beaten Indiana and you know how important that was to them today. Well it's been reflected in their their attitude out here and their hustle today. They've really come in here and made a statement come out with a purpose. Got great leadership from uh, their upperclassmen. Locking foul inside, Matt Nover, who just came in, commits a foul. You know, Clem has got a great seat. I love his chair, his stool. But as a visiting coach, i got to do the same thing, Gary. I, I've got to put me a stool up there and uh, be visible to those officials. I tell you what, though, you can't see if you sit behind Clem. As big as he is sitting on that stool, you've got the worst seat in the house. 
And worse than Jack the Roots up there? <laughs> That's right. I don't think you'll tell Clem to move, though, would you? No, no uh, I think uh, I, I think in this game here, he can sit any place he wants. <laughs> Boy, his team playing this afternoon. He claims it's his bad knees. Now, he's talking about having to drain yesterday. Hey, Jerry, I didn't have a bad knee when I coached out of Kansas. And I got up and down off of that floor until I got sore. Look at that. One point away from that, and they just missed it. 99-76. 4.51 left. Larry to the hoop. Todd Larry playing a lot in the second half. Again, Bob trying to find some guys. Find the right combination. That's what he talked about on tape earlier. He just can't seem to find the five that can play against all defenses. Well, it's a defensive lapse when you let a man go all the way from one end to the other and take it straight down the boards to the basket. They still can't reach that century mark. Newbern trying desperately to do that. No basket and a foul on Newbern. And he's fouled out of the game. He, he showed a little disgust on the call, but the referee was right there on the baseline, had a good view of it. Clem Haskins is counseling right here. He's saying, hey, fella, we've had a great game. You played a great game. Let's don't spoil it with a bad show of attitude. And Newberg takes that, that coaching real good on the sideline. Boy, the seniors have got to be happy. As we mentioned now, he's had a real hernia problem. He had an operation in August. He had an anti-inflammation injection in his abdomen before the game Thursday night because of some nerve damage that was done in the surgery. It takes a lot of courage to do that, but it shows you how bad Newburn wanted to play. And of course, he played very well against Iowa Thursday with 17 points and nine assists and coming back with 14 here today. And Gary, what a tough break for Indiana. They just put Willie Burton back in for it. Greg Graham able to cash that one in, and it's a 99 79 game. Well, all I would say is look out for Michigan and Illinois, as that's where Minnesota heads next. And UNLV beaten by LSU. At one time, we were told, Chris Jackson had 31 points in that game. Boy, you talk about some players. Dale Brown, so much talent. Here is Lynch. Anderson working hard, and Sikomjanski has picked Over up the ball. Foul. That is his fourth. Joe, as you were coaching, were there, I know it was tough to win against Kentucky. In either one of the places, Rupp Arena or before that, where were some places you hated to go play when you were coaching? Any place that had one of those gyms where you felt like the people were just closing in on you, Gary, are tough places to play. Acoustics has got a lot to do with it. The old gyms down in Starkville, Mississippi, uh, at Auburn, they played in that old Quonset hut before they built their new facility. Those new facilities helped uh, equal out the home and home advantage. And uh, I think one of the toughest places for us was in Tennessee and their older facilities. People hated to play in Memorial Coliseum in Lexington because it had such an intimate setting. But Rupp Arena had lost that, but uh, it's beginning to get it back. I understand now that Chris Jackson had 37 of that game. Kim Belt, our producer, updating us in that game against UNLV. And there's a foul on Cheney. Well, the referee actually caught the second foul there. He first, Willie Burton got hit in the eye. The referee saw it but didn't, didn't react to it. And then when he got the hand check, he called it. Well, this Big Ten picture certainly changed from a year ago. This team, Indiana, won it. They went 27 and 8. Right now, Purdue is the only unbeaten team. They are 7 and 0. Their best start since 1936. And you've got Michigan, Michigan State with two losses. Illinois and Minnesota with three, and Indiana now will drop to four. And right. they've reached the century mark. Well, you, when you think about who all Indiana lost from last year, Jay Edwards, Joe Hillman, Chucky White, Brian Sloan, uh, Smith, D'Aluzio, and then Lawrence Funderburg from this year's team. Chris Reynolds, who started the game, makes the move, and he's fouled by Bond, and the foul coming before the basket. It's 100 to 82 with 345 left in the game. Well, Indi go ahead, Joe. Well, Indiana's really driving to the basket. Every time down the floor now, they're taking it to the hole. They're trying to catch Minnesota in little defensive laps, get the basket or draw the foul. 
Williams has not scored in the game, and now a lane violation against Indiana, and Minnesota will get the ball out of bounds. We're going to take a break. 3.45 left here. The guard has been good to the Gophers. All five starters have been in double figures, as well as their sixth man off the bench, Walter Bond. Well, they, they have been an unselfish team. No one's really dominated the ball. They've moved the ball well, and it shows that uh, they have a lot of depth offensively. Who would you pick, Gary, as the most valuable player in this I game? think I'd have to give it to Burton. He's done everything well for this team. Early part of the game, I thought Coffey got him started right. Well, you know, he got in foul trouble and had to sit out a lot, but he still had 15 points compared to Burton's 22. This guy here, Lynch, had a strong game. He has 15 points. Here's Bond, and Bond now with 17. You know, Minnesota seemingly, Joe, really shoots the ball well with somebody on it and somebody's hand in their face right. as Graham drives inside. That, that means that they've had great concentration, Gary, and singleness of purpose in this game. They want to beat Indiana so bad that when they go up for that shot, boy, they're staying right with them, regardless of that defensive pressure. Their concentration has just been really great. Check from Jansky is fouling out. So both of the centers have fouled out for Minnesota. Here's, here's the shot by Bond with the tough defense right in his face. And you can just see the intensity that he has when he goes up at the shot and how he held his follow through. Look at this balance. Burton with 22. Chickam Jansky, who just fouled out, with 16. Bond with 16. Lynch with 15. Newburn with 14. And Coffey with 10. Yeah, that, that's great balance there. That's difficult for anyone to concentrate and uh, stop this Minnesota offense. On the other hand, Indiana has two men in double figures. Cheney with 24, Anderson with 16. Two of the starters, Reynolds and Nover, haven't even scored. Graham able to make it in 102 to 83 game. Boy, you think this is a tough ticket now? Wait till Purdue comes here with the way this team is playing. Every game that they play in here is going to be a, an interesting, exciting ball game because they've got an exciting team. Rick Bay, the athletic director of Minnesota, has got to be excited about the enthusiasm. Uh, you can bet that uh, Clem Askins is going to give this crowd a lot of credit for this win today. They, they have really been supporting very vocal. Less than two and a half to go in the game. Minnesota in no hurry right now. 11 seconds on the shot clock. And Lynch works his way free. A two-pointer. Lynch came off that good screen and, and found himself open. The defense rushed him, but he held his, held his follow through against that pressure, just like they've been doing all afternoon. 17 points in the game for Lynch, and the foul goes on Lewis, fouling Greg Graham. Hey, I think the officials in the crowd called that one right, Gary. It looked like it Lewis had position. Coming in now is Mario Green, number five. He's a junior out of the Bahamas who hasn't played an awful lot this year. And now Jeff Alifant has checked into the game, a senior replacing Eric Anderson. There's the numbers on Lynch and his early play in transition, going down and stuffing a couple of breakaways, yeah, I, really got the crowd into yeah, the game. Yeah, I thought he broke it open. His play uh, probably was came at a time when they really needed it. Oliphant's got a knee brace on there that uh, would probably do for a, for a linebacker. Well, he tore the interior cushion in a pickup game before the start of the season. And Bob was telling me last night he really misses his savvy, his passing ability. And he just has a tough time with that knee brace trying to play defense, as you can see here. 143 left. Here is Green. You know, another guy that came for the Bahamas was Michael Thompson, the all-time leading scorer and rebounder here at Minnesota. Well, he's found uh, a glory hole down there to get the players from. Bond, rebound is cleared by Reynolds. 104-85, if you have just joined us, Minnesota's been in command. Alifant misses, Bond to Lewis. Two on one, nice break. And Coffey gets the foul. 
Everybody had a shot at that one, but it was Coffee who finally put it in. Looked like they're playing with seven guys out there. So many guys in gold around the basket. Oh, Reynolds stripped. Here comes Coffee. He's going to take this one. You could see. You could see Coffee look over the floor then and see his path to the basket, and it looked like a smile just came over his face. He took it all away. 14 points for Coffee, and they're on their feet applauding. Thanks to our statistician George Hill for a job well done. Baseline, and Alifant gets on the scoreboard. Listen to this crowd. That's applause of appreciation for the way these golfers have played this afternoon. Mario Green. Eight seconds left. Jade has played a strong game. Minnesota is going to win it 13 in a row. The first time to beat Indiana since 1982. For Joe Beal. Thank you.